In this video, we need to draw the Nyquist plot of the system and we need to find the range of k, that is k, k is our gain. We need to find the range of k for making the system stable. So, if you are watching this video for the first time, please watch the previous video and make your base strong. Why we are drawing Nyquist plot in order to determine stability. Stability of what? Closed loop system. Nyquist plot is used to find stability of closed loop system using open loop system. If we plot the poles of the system in the S plane, then we can determine stability. For getting poles, what we will do? We will equate denominator equal to 0. Then we will get either SC equal to 0 or we will get S plus 2 equal to 0. From that we will get SC equal to minus 2. From S plus 10 equal to 0, we will get SC equal to minus 10. So there is a pole at the origin, then at minus 2 and minus 10. If you have a pole at origin of the pole is on the imaginary axis, the system will be marginally stable. If poles are on the right hand side, system will be unstable. So in this case, system is marginally stable. Open loop system is marginally stable. We need to find the stability of closed loop system. So we need to draw Nyquist plot. As we know, closed loop system transfer function is g divided by 1 plus gh. For getting poles, what we will do? We will get denominator equal to 0. That means 1 plus gh equal to 0. From that, we will get gh equal to minus 1. So we need to draw plot in gh plane. Okay. Here we are drawing plot in s plane. Here we need to draw in gh plane for closed loop system. So by using S plane, you need to make GH plane with the help of a Nyquist contour. Okay, with the help of Nyquist contour, you need to convert S plane into GH plane. You need to map. The process is termed as mapping. Now in the previous video, I discussed how to draw the Nyquist contour. Okay, so Nyquist contour will be drawn from, it will take the entire right hand side plane. Because if there is a pole on the right hand side, the system will be unstable. So we will take entire right hand side starting from 0 this is real axis and this is imaginary axis j omega so this will be omega so starting from omega equal to 0 it will start the region will start so starting from 0 till positive infinity that is our first region c1 then from there it will cover the entire right hand side so we will draw a circle with the radius with the the equation of circle in polar plot it is r e raised to j theta where r is the radius of the circle. Here we are taking the entire right hand side. So r turns to infinity. So the radius will be infinity. Now theta is the angle. As we know in polar plot angle is taken positive in anti-clockwise direction. This is 0. This will be plus 90, plus 180, plus 270. Positive in anti-clockwise direction. Negative in clockwise direction. 0, minus 90, minus 180, minus 270. So in this case, the region is starting from this axis, that is plus 90. So plus 90 to minus 90. So the region will be from plus 90 to minus 90. Plus 90 means pi by 2 to minus 90, minus pi by 2. Plus pi by 2 to minus pi by 2 is the region. That is my region C2. Now third region, it is from minus infinity, omega is minus infinity to omega equal to 0. That is my third region. Okay, that is my third region, that is C3. Now. As you can see here, there is a pole at origin. That means at s equal to 0, we have a pole. In that case, there is a slight change in the figure. There will be a small depression here. That region is our region C4. So in C4, it is also a small circle and the radius of the circle is turning to 0. It is a small circle. Here the radius is infinity because it is a big circle. Here the circle is a small circle, so radius is turning to 0. And the equation of circle will be r e raised to j theta. Now theta, theta is varying from this axis to this axis. This axis it is minus 90. So minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. Okay. So this is my fourth region. And the equation of circle is in polar graph is r e raised to j theta. r is the radius. As you can see this circle is very small. So radius is almost turning to 0. In this case the circle is very big. Radius is turning to infinity. But in this case radius is so small. So I write radius turning to 0. Now theta, theta is varying from this axis to this axis. This axis it is minus 90 and this axis it is plus 90. So from minus 90 to plus 90, that is from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. That is my region C4. In C2, the region is from plus pi by 2 to minus pi by 2. This will be my Nyquist contour. Using this Nyquist contour, I need, I need to plot Nyquist plot in GH plane. So we can take the region one by one. C1, C2, C3 and C4, there are four regions. We can take one by one. So, taking my first region, I am going to map my first region that is C1. C1 is from omega equal to 0 to omega equal to infinity, from 0 to infinity. In that case, wherever there is S, I need to replace it with J omega. 
and I need to find the plot that is going to come in GH plane. As you know, when omega is varied from 0 to infinity, that plot will be polar plot. So the figure I am going to get here is polar plot. So this is my question, g of s equal to k divided by s into s plus 2 into s plus 10. First thing I need to check is that whether it is in standard form, 1 plus st format, whether it is in standard form. As you can see, here it is not in standard form, s plus 2. I need it in the form of s plus 1, s plus 1. So I need to take 2 outside. So when I take 2 outside, then the remaining time it is s, then it will become s by 2 plus 1. Then from this equation, I am going to take 10 outside. So I took 10 outside, then the remaining time will be s by 10 plus 1. So 2 into 10 it will be 20, 1 by 20 it will be 0 0.05, so 0 0.05k divided by s into 1 by 2s, it will be 0.5s plus 1, then 1 by 10 it will be 0 0.1, 0 0.1s plus 1. So this is the standard form. So this is the standard form. Now, in polar plot what we need to do, we need to substitute s equal to j omega, that means wherever there is s, replace it with j omega. So I am going to get g of j omega. So this will be my g of j omega. I replaced s with j omega. So wherever there is s, I replaced it with j omega. Now I need to find the magnitude of g of j omega and I need to find the angle of g of j omega. For finding magnitude, magnitude equal to 0 0.05k divided by, instead of s, it will be omega. Then this is of a plus b format. So it will become root of a square plus b square. 1 square plus 0 0.05 omega. 0.5 omega square. Then this term again a plus b format so root of a square that is 1 square plus 0.1 omega square. So this will be my magnitude. Magnitude of g of j omega. Now I need to find the angle. For getting angle here omega is in the denominator. So that means if s is in the denominator my angle will be minus then if there is only s term then minus 90. If s square if s square is in the denominator my angle will be minus 180. If s cube is in the denominator, my angle will be minus 270, like that. If s is in the numerator, then angle will be plus 90. Here, s is in the denominator, so my angle is minus 90. Then, this term is in the denominator, therefore again, negative sign. And this is of a plus b format, so we will get tan inverse b by a. b it is 0.5 omega. 0.5 omega divided by a it is 1. So, 0.5 omega by 1, it will be 0.5 omega. Then, this term is also in the denominator, so negative sign. Then, tan inverse b by a. b by a is 0.1 omega divided by 1 it will be 0.1 omega itself so this is my phase angle now as you know theta sorry omega is varied from 0 to infinity so first of all i am going to find at omega equal to 0 i am going to find the magnitude and phase angle for getting magnitude wherever there is omega i am going to replace it with 0 so 1 by 0 it is going to be infinity so magnitude is going to be infinity now for getting angle wherever there is omega replace it with 0 so the angle will be minus 90 minus tan inverse 0 what is tan inverse 0 tan 0 is 0, so tan inverse 0 will be 0 itself, so 0 and minus 0, so the angle will be minus 90, so angle will be minus 90, so when I substitute omega equal to 0, my magnitude is infinity and the angle is minus 90. Now when I substitute omega equal to infinity, when I substitute omega equal to infinity in this equation, it will become infinity, infinity and infinity, so 1 by infinity it will be 0, anything divided by infinity it will be 0. Now for getting angle minus 90 minus tan inverse infinity, 0.5 into omega, omega means infinity, so tan inverse infinity. What is tan 90? It is infinity. So tan inverse infinity will be 90 degree. So minus 90, again minus 90, then here also minus, then tan inverse instead of omega infinity. So tan inverse infinity it will be 90 degree. Minus 90, 90, 90. So the angle it is going to be minus 270. So minus 270. When omega equal to infinity, the magnitude is 0 and the angle is minus 270. Now we are going to draw the plot on GH plane using this. So when omega equal to 0, corresponding point in GH plane will be infinity infinity in minus 90, minus 90 means here, so in this axis the magnitude will be infinity, it is starting from infinity, then when omega equal to infinity, that is my ending point in S plane, corresponding in GH plane it will be 0, that means at origin, then minus 270, minus 270 means here, so in this axis at origin, so my plot will be like this, now I need to find the crossing point, this is my minus 180 degree, minus 180, so my graph, my plot will cross this minus 180 at a point, I need to find this point, the direction is from infinity to zero, infinity to, to zero. So the direction will be like this and I need to find this point. So this is my g of j omega. I am going to open this bracket in the denominator. Okay. Then I will get 0 0.05k divided by j omega into 1 it will be j omega plus j omega into j omega. j into j it will be j square. Then it will become minus, minus 1. j square is minus 1. j into j it will be j square that is minus 1. So minus. So instead of plus it will become minus. Minus. 
then omega square 0.5 omega square then that term is multiplied by this one 1 plus 0.1 j omega now multiplying this with this so j omega into 1 it will become j omega then j omega into 0.1 j omega it will become j and j it will become minus 1 so it will minus then omega into omega it will become omega square and there is one point 0.1 so point 0.1 omega square then this term into 1 it will become minus 0.5 omega square then minus 0.5 square into point 0.1 j omega minus 0.5 into point 0.1 it will become point 0.05 then minus then minus 0.5 omega square into omega it will be omega cube here there is j this term into this term so minus 0.5 into point 0.1 it will become point 0.05 then minus sign then omega square into omega it will become omega cube there is j this will be omega cube so this is the denominator so here point 0.1 omega square minus 0.5 omega square it will be point 0.6 omega square then j omega minus 0 0.05 j omega cube so plus j omega minus 0 0.05 j omega cube now as you can see here j and omega is common in this so we can take that outside so the final answer will be this is 0 0.6 omega square plus j omega i am taking outside then the remaining term it will be 1 minus 0 0.05 omega square why i am writing like this i need to find the point at this point this point as you know this point this is a real axis and this is a imaginary axis at this point the imaginary axis value will be zero so this is my imaginary axis near j term near j j is my imaginary so near j it is the imaginary value so omega into root of omega into 1 minus point 0 0.05 omega square will be zero at this point at this point imaginary value will be zero from this i will get omega equal to zero and i will get 1 equal to point 0 0.05 omega square then from this I will get omega square equal to 1 divided by 0 0.05 omega equal to root of 1 divided by 0 0.05 the value will be 4.472 radian per second that is the frequency value and this is my phase angle minus 180 is my phase angle at that time my frequency will be phase cos over frequency now at this point there will be only real axis real value I am going to take the real part from this equation then g of s equal to 0 0.05 k divided by minus 0 0.6 omega square now, now i am going to substitute this omega value in this equation there is omega i am going to substitute this value and the value will be 0 0.05 k divided by minus 0 0.6 then omega square that is 4.472 square the answer i am going to get is minus 0 0.00 0, 0.417 k is minus sign because denominator I have a minus and k is in the numerator so this will be the value at this point the value will be minus 0 0.00417 k so this will be my section in gh plane okay this is my c1 for region c1 this will be my region in gh plane now I am going to find the gh plane for the second region I am going to map the second region second region is c2 and uh, this is a circle part of a circle and the equation of circle in polar plot is r e raised to j theta r is the radius here we are taking the entire right hand side so radius will be up to infinity okay so limit r turns to infinity now what is theta theta is varying from plus pi by 2 to minus pi by 2 the angle plus 90 to minus 90 so theta is from plus pi by 2 to minus pi by 2 what we need to do this is s plane we need to find the gh plane so wherever there is s we need to replace it with r e raised to j theta where the r value is turning to infinity so instead of r we can write infinity e raised to j theta so this is my g of s i need to replace wherever there is s i need to replace it with this term but before replacing as you know when i substitute s this is my standard form 1 plus st okay for s i am going to substitute this equation that is infinity the magnitude is infinity so it will become 1 plus infinity anything added to infinity it will be infinity itself so anything added to st we will get st itself okay anything added to infinity we will get infinity so when we substitute infinity here you will get st itself i hope you understood so instead of 1 plus st we can write st so we can remove the 1 plus term now 0.5 into 0 0.1 it will be 0 0.05 0 0.05 and 0 0.05 will get cancelled the remaining term it will be k divided by s s and s it will be s cube now instead of s we are going to substitute this equation so it will become k divided by infinity e raised to j theta the whole cube so whole cube means it will become 3 j theta okay now anything divided by infinity it will be 1 by infinity it is 0 so anything divided by infinity it is 0 and e raised to j 3 theta is in the denominator when i'm going to take it in the numerator it will become e raised to minus j 3 theta now 
theta theta is varying from plus pi by 2 to minus pi by 2 okay when at plus pi by 2 what will be my gh plane so at plus pi by 2 gs plane it will be 0 e raised to minus j 3 theta for theta i am going to substitute pi by 2 so it will become 3 pi by 2 now at minus pi by 2 what will be my gh plane at minus pi by 2 my corresponding gh plane the magnitude is 0 and the angle it is e raised to minus j 3 instead of theta right minus pi by 2 so minus and minus it will become plus so it will become plus 3 pi by 2 in s plane the graph is starting from plus pi by 2 through 0 reaching minus pi by 2 so here the corresponding will be minus 3 pi by 2 through 0 it need to go okay directly we can't reach there minus 3 pi by 2 through 0 to 3 pi by 2 so first of all we need to start from minus 3 pi, 3 pi by 2 3 pi by 2 means minus 270 minus 270 is here so we need to start from this axis so minus 270 is in the this axis so we are going to start from here now we need to reach for minus 270 3 pi by 2 means 270 so minus 270 to plus 270 so minus 270 to plus 270 you will think that we can directly reach like this no through 0 we need to go okay so minus 270 minus 180 minus 90 0 plus 90 plus 180 plus 270 like that we need to go we can't directly go from here so minus 270 minus 270 means this axis so my graph is going to start from here then through minus 180 then minus 90 i reached 0 so i reached 0 from 0 it is going to plus plus 3 pi by 2 that means plus 270 so 0 plus 90 plus 180 plus 270 0 plus 90 plus 180 plus 270 so starting from here the direction it is going to be like this from minus 3 pi by 2 to plus 3 pi by 2 here the radius is turning to infinity but here the magnitude is almost 0 so the radius of this circle will be almost 0 okay now my third region third region is from minus infinity to zero that means omega is varied from minus infinity to zero so for this graph the corresponding plot in gh plane for getting that we will substitute sc equal to j omega in the region c1 also we substitute sc equal to g omega that is from zero to infinity and the plot we got is like this here it is minus infinity to zero that is the reverse or the inverse or the mirror image if this plot is like this then the mirror image it is going to be like this take the mirror image of this one so the direction is moving up so here the direction will be moving down so this is the corresponding plot in gh plane of our third region now our fourth region we have a fourth region here because there is a pole at the origin because of having a pole at the origin there is a fourth region like this the direction is like this from theta this is a small circle so in polar plot the equation of circle is r e raised to j theta and theta here it is varying from this axis to this axis this axis is minus 90 so minus 90 to plus 90 that means minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 this is the graph in s plane we need to find the corresponding graph in gh plane and the radius of the circle is very so very small so the radius is almost turning to zero so instead of r we can write zero e raised to j theta so for s we will substitute zero e raised to j theta so this is my g of s wherever there is s i will substitute zero e raised to j theta but before substituting i know my standard for 1 plus st i know for s i am going to substitute the magnitude 0 so it will become 1 plus 0 it is 1 so 1 plus st i will write it is 1 so i can remove the s terms i will remove the s terms so my equation it is going to be 0 0.05k divided by s into 1 into 1 so it will become s now instead of s i need to replace 0 e raised to j theta so 0 0.05k divided by 0 e raised to j theta 0 e raised to j theta anything divided by 0 1 by 0 it is infinity so the magnitude is going to be infinity and e raised to j theta in the denominator i'm going to take it in the numerator then it will become e raised to minus j theta so my g of s it is going to be infinity e raised to minus j theta now the graph is starting from this axis to this axis that is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 so graph is starting from minus pi by 2 so at minus pi by 2 what will be my gh plane starting gh plane starting it will be infinity e raised to minus j instead of theta i'm going to write minus pi by 2 so minus pi by 2 minus and minus it will become plus so my infinity e raised to plus j pi by 2 now the graph will end at pi by 2 okay end at pi by 2 so ending point in gh plane it will be infinity e raised to minus j theta instead of theta i'm writing pi by 2 so my ending point would be infinity e raised to minus j pi by 2 so from 90 to minus 90 through 0 through 0 i need to go from 9 plus 90 to minus 90.
and the magnitude is infinity. So my circle will be a large circle. Okay. So starting point here the starting point is minus pi by two. Here the starting point is plus pi by two. That means plus ninety. So graph will start from plus ninety. Then through zero it will reach minus pi by two. That is minus ninety. And the magnitude of this graph is infinity. So radius of this turns to infinity. So this is the corresponding plot in GH plane. Here as you can see this region is very small. Here radius is almost turning to zero. But in GH plane the radius is almost turning to infinity. That was my fourth region's mapping. Now I am going to plot the GH plane. In GH plane I am going to plot the Nyquist plot. This is my Nyquist corner. I divided into four regions. I found the corresponding region in the GH plane. Now I am going to combine all those regions and plot the Nyquist plot. So first region C1. The corresponding plot it is a polar plot. Starting from infinity it will reach zero. So starting from infinity it is going to reach zero. But it is not actually reaching zero because at this point the second graph it is going to start from this axis okay it will start from this axis and it will meet at this graph so it is not reaching zero before that it will reach this point i hope you understood actually this point should meet zero but it is not meeting zero when it reach here it is meeting this graph so meeting this graph this graph the radius is almost zero so this is a small graph small graph with radius almost zero now it is a two circle that is for minus 3 pi by 2 to plus 3 pi by 2. So for minus 3 pi by 2 to plus 3 pi by 2. And it is also not touching this axis. Before touching this axis, the next figure is coming. So next figure is the inverse of polar plot or the mirror image. Mirror image it is going to be like this. And this one should actually meet at 0. But it is not meeting 0 because it will touch this plot. I hope you understood. From here, it will start and it is not meeting 0. It will meet the next diagram's point. Then next diagram, it is also not meeting this axis, it will meet next diagram. And this diagram, it is not going to infinity, it will meet next diagram, like that. Okay, we completed the three diagrams. And the fourth diagram, the radius is almost infinity. It is a big circle with the radius almost infinity. So radius is almost infinity, it is a big circle. Okay, now listen, the directions. Here it is starting. So this is our starting graph direction, it is from infinity to zero. Here it is from minus 3 pi by 2 to plus 3 pi by 2. So direction, minus 3 pi by 2. 2 plus 3 pi by 2 here after reaching the graph is going like this so this one the graph going like this and here it is from plus 90 to minus 90 so plus 90 to minus 90 so this is the direction so this will be my Nyquist plot and this is my Nyquist contour with using Nyquist contour in S plane and plotting Nyquist plot in GH plane now listen carefully we are going to find the stability from this plot as we already found that this re this point it is minus 0.00417k. We already found that point. Okay. Now for getting stability, the equation in Nyquist plot for getting stability it is n equal to p minus z, where p is the number of poles on right hand side, and z is the number of poles on right hand side of closed loop transfer function. This is for open loop transfer function. N is the number of encirclement in our point. We are in GH plane. We are dealing with point minus one plus j zero on minus one. How many number of encirclements are there? If encirclements are in anti-clockwise, n will be positive. If encirclements are in clockwise, n will be negative. From this equation, we will get z equal to n equal to p minus z. So z equal to p minus n. So this is the stability limiting factor. If z equal to 0, system will be stable. If z is greater than 0, system will be unstable. So first of all, we can find what is p value. For getting p, we will equate denominator equal to 0. From that, we will get either s equal to 0 or we will get s equal to minus 2 and s equal to minus 10. So when we draw the plot, poles are on the minus 2 and minus 10. All poles are on the left hand side and one pole is at the origin. This system it is marginally stable. There are no poles on the right hand side. Okay, No poles on RHS. So our p value it is 0. p is 0 because there are no poles on the right hand side. So now we need to find the n value. n is number of encirclement. But we can't directly find n value. We have only the region or we have k. We need to find the limiting factor k. That means 0 0.00417 k. This is minus 1. Okay. We are going to find the limiting value. When it will be minus 1, what is the what is the value of k? We will get k equal to minus 1 divided by minus 0 0.00417. It will be minus and minus will get cancelled. 1 by 0 0.00417 is 240. So k value is 240. When k is 240, this will be this point it will be minus 1. Okay, this point it will be minus 1. So it is the limiting value. Now for finding the stability limit, suppose think that k is less than 240. When k is less than 240, the point will be outside 
the circle okay then there will be no encirclement in the nike spot if the point is outside then there are no encirclement because if, if, if the point is here then there are no encirclements at that time our n value it is zero p value already we found that it is zero so p equal to zero n equal to zero we will get z equal to zero minus zero it is zero when z is zero system is stable now when k is greater than 240 my point will be lying inside okay my point will be lying inside this at this place okay inside minus one it will be less than minus one at that time the number of encirclement in nike is plot listen here okay number of encirclements as you can see this is one encirclement and this is the next encirclement so there are two encirclements so i will get n equal to n equal to two since the encirclements are in clockwise direction the sign will be negative if it is in anti clockwise direction n is positive two but this is clockwise direction so n is negative two we already found p is zero so number of z means number of poles on the right hand side of closed loop transfer function so z will be equal to p minus n p it is zero then minus minus two so zero plus two minus n minus it will become plus so we'll get plus two so if z is greater than zero the system will be unstable so k should not be greater than 240 So the value of k will be right lying between zero less than k less than 240. If k is greater than 240, the system will become unstable. So this is the value for k for the system to be stable.